Hello and welcome to Quick Hints, episode 2. Today we're featuring Belgium. So Belgium's a landlocked country in northwestern Europe, and it's a linguistically diverse country because it shares borders with several countries. So I'm going to share a few hints and tips to help you distinguish between Belgium and, say, the Netherlands, because they can look very similar. And also Belgium and France, and I mean Belgium in anywhere if you're unsure. So this is a beautiful city in Belgium called Ghent. So Ghent is in the province of Flanders. So this area of Belgium is home to the Flemish people. The Flemish language is essentially Dutch, and most of the differences between Dutch and Flemish are related to syntax and pronunciation. Dutch is, of course, a West Germanic language. This is the part of the city centre of Ghent. It's a car-free zone. This isn't a car. This isn't a car. No shit. What I meant to say was, this isn't a bus. This is a tram. It's just really a bus with a rope tied to it. It's like this in Berlin and also in Amsterdam too, how the tram tracks just sort of run through <laughs> run through the main the main drag where people will often just be milling or walking around. There's no like guards or barriers, but hey, it works. Anyway, back to the architecture in Belgium. So again, has some of the best examples of a particular style of Belgian architecture, but first I'd like to mention that there's a lot of medieval and Gothic architecture in Belgium as well as evidenced by this. There's also some really beautiful modernist buildings that are sort of, I think, really tastefully interspersed throughout Ghent. It is one of the most beautiful cities I've ever been to. And if you ever get an opportunity to go there, do it. The food's amazing and they have a wonderful live music scene and some really amazing film festivals. So yeah, check out this modern building here. Like, that's just... Actually, I don't know if this is a building. What does it say? It's a pavilion. So this building here is called the Crook because it appears in the Crook in the river. This is a library and also a cultural centre. I think I said that already, where they do everything from researching nanotechnologies to history archiving plus more. Okay, so this style of architecture isn't unique to Belgium. However, just like the Stobie Poles in Adelaide, you will see this style of building more often than not in Belgium. You will also see it in Amsterdam, for example, and also the Netherlands and France as well, and maybe Germany too. I don't know, I'm not an expert, okay? But that style of architecture is called, well, I don't think it's what the, the style's called, but a feature of the style as I said, I'm not, I'm not an expert, but it's called Crow Step. And so Crow Step is this peculiar and really attractive brickwork, I think, that you see on buildings in Belgium or in the Flanders region. So this is Crow Step. It's the ascending peak of brickwork on the gables of a building. Yeah, so I think it's like a crow's step. That's what my interpretation is. You jump, the crow jumps like it's its own personal staircase up here on the gables, on the rooftops of these beautiful buildings in Ghent, which, by the way, have the best examples of this style in, in all of Europe and the oldest as well. In France, it's called it's called Corby Step. Corby is the French word for crow. So, yeah, that's what it means. This, this top one is called the crow stone as well, the final brick. Another unique thing about these particular buildings, you see alternating brick colours. The Belgians were masterful, or are masterful when it comes to brickwork. No volcanic fault lines here. That's that. Let's leave the idyllic city of Ghent. So I just wanted to show you this one street I stumbled across. This is something that you will see that's common in some parts of France, but especially in the Netherlands and in Belgium and that is these bike paths like they really really care about this cyclists in these countries I mean I want to care but the way the roads are here they've made it really hard for me to care no I do care about cyclists a lot and I wish they would do something as cool as 
this in Melbourne, although they're getting better. Like we have heaps of bike tracks now, I think. I'm not sure. I don't ride a bike. Pedal posting, let, let us know in the comments. How would you rate Melbourne's bike access on a scale of one to seven? Anyway, all right. So you see really great bike lanes, Netherlands, Belgium. Belgium, why do I keep saying Belgian? I'll have to edit that out. If you see a really great bike lane, you're in the Netherlands. Oh my God, you're in the Netherlands or you're in Belgium. All right, let's get out of here. I love cyclists. All right, here's another thing I just wanted to point out. These concrete roads with very flat footpaths, almost level with the road itself. The gutters are almost, they seem non-existent. It actually rains a lot in Belgium. Belgium is incredibly flat along with the Netherlands and it's rainy. So I don't know if you can tell, but the road is kind of peaked. It's hard to tell. Hold on. Swing around. I know this is probably true of all roads, but I feel like it's especially noticeable on, on these ones, the peaked road. So yeah, the peak is here. And the brickwork, very wide pedestrian footpaths in rural regions of well, this isn't very rural, but it's not in the heart of Brussels or Antwerp or, or Ghent or Bruges, is it? It's, you know, you know what I'm saying. It's a quite wide footpath and brickwork, lots of brickwork in Belgium. And these roads look concrete to me too, so something worth worth noting. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying, Yana, I see. <laughs> you're maybe not saying that. You're probably just saying my name. I've seen... Buildings and streets and footpaths like this in the Netherlands as well. So how am I going to figure this one out? Well, the way you do it is by looking at our friend, the number plate. Here we are in the heart of Brussels. I just want to mention before I move on, even though I have moved on from language, I've literally moved through two now two completely different <laughs> things. I'm going to quickly move back before I forget to say this. Belgium shares four land borders with Luxembourg, Germany, France, and the Netherlands. Not only do they speak Dutch, they also speak Flemish. But as I said before, that's more about syntax and pronunciation or just saying a phrase in, well, that's syntax, like, yeah, carry on. And German, did I say that as well? And Luxem, what, what do they call it? What do they call it? I think it's... Luxembourgish? That can't be right. Let's check. Yeah, it's Luxembourgish. <laughs> Interestingly, Luxembourgish closely resembles the language of the Transylvanian Saxons. And they've been speaking it since the Middle Ages, and they still speak it today in present day Romania. So that's fascinating. All right. We are digressing even more. Let's go back to the country we're talking about. After that interlude, let me get back to the way you tell the difference between the Netherlands and Belgium, or the way I do, if we're fortunate enough to see a car. So Belgium has a very distinct number plate. Now bear in mind, it shares a border with four countries and cars can travel over borders. Would you believe it? But if you happen to see more than one, you're probably okay. So the feature is this number plate here. It has a distinct red mark in the middle and overall a red hue, as well as the classic blue European strip on the left-hand side. So if you're tossing up between the Netherlands and Belgium, let this, let this be the decider for you. And in case you're afraid that it'll be too similar to the one in the Netherlands, they're not similar at all. So you'll never get it mixed up unless you, for some reason, just get these two mixed up. But anyway, just remember that Belgium has the word gem in it. An example of a gemstone is a ruby and a ruby is, is red. Anyway, here's the number plate of the Netherlands. It is a stick of yellow across the back of all the cars and the front of all the cars as well. So that's it. Let's get back to Belgium. Here's another piece of in-game data relating to roads or whatever. 
it's the chevron unfortunately there are a lot of chevrons in europe with this color schema and let me just show you the map so this is a really great map you can find this online it's the european chevron color schemes as you can see a lot of eastern europe is oops red and white chevrons sometimes the red and white is inverted but good luck remembering <laughs> Sweden is obsessed with their flag colors, which are of course, obsessed is the wrong word. These are the colors of Ikea. Anyway, enough about colored chevrons. So I think that's all I had to show you. Yep. Are you 100% confident that if you spawned in Belgium, that you would know where you are? Would you? Who knows? Because look at this. Look what I just saw. We're still in Belgium, ladies and gentlemen. The number plate of the Netherlands. We need to end this now. Looks like a cold day. Done and goodbye, beautiful sheep. I think I just have to end it on that. I'm gonna end you with the this. So I'm gonna leave you here. End you, not end you. So I'm gonna leave you here now, looking at this self-reflective sign, staring pensively at the road. They're with their friends, Circle Blue Head, and I have a touch of vertigo. All right, that is actually it this time. I'm I'm ending it there. I'm I'm sure that was all of the clips. All of, I'm sure that was all of the quick tips. Which country should I pick next? All right. So long, farewell.